Hello, Internet people. Uh, my name's Scott, also known as Shenanigans Online. Uh, today, I'm going to show you one of my LEGO dice towers. As you can see here, I have three dice towers. Uh, I'm going to do a series of three videos with uh, showcasing each one in its features. Uh, the first one I will be this one, which is my castle one. Uh, and then we'll do pirates and ninjago. Um, so I actually built these in the order of this one, and then this one, and then this one. But I'm going to do them where I do this one first, and then this one second, and then this one third. Because uh, this one has some issues. It it doesn't work as well as I would hope. I was a little, a little disappointed with how it turned out. It's still good. I mean, aesthetically, I think it's absolutely fantastic. But it does have its issues. So I'll do that one second. It, it's... Not as exciting. And this one, uh, I don't know if I can ever surpass as a dice tower. So, this is my castle set. Uh, it is made entirely out of one set, which if you ever want to make a Lego dice tower, I strongly suggest this set. I mean, I don't think it's in production anymore. You'd have to get it uh, on eBay or something like that. But it is absolutely fantastic. These, these panels are phenomenal for keeping the dice within a contained structure. Uh, you might have noticed on the other ones uh, before I shuffle them away that they have a lot of open space and it becomes a very big challenge to actually just keep the dice in the tower. And they don't get lodged somewhere, particularly D4s. They, they really like to get into little spaces and get stuck. Um, I'll put the details in the description box about which set this actually came from, like the, the actual box number. I don't have it on me, I don't know. Uh, I've also added a little little Gandalf and a Saruman because every wizard's tower needs wizards. Um, and I decided that they were a better fit. I also have an emblem from one of the Nexo Knight sets, but uh, that doesn't need to be there, neither do these minifigs, so like you could just still just build the rest of the tower, obviously, from just this one set. It's not like you're missing critical pieces if you don't buy those. Okay, um, so I'm going to get some dice. Right. And we'll just roll the dice and see how it goes. 19, pretty good. This uh, this particular tower, I really like for uh, running games because th these lower pieces act as a shield if someone, you know, if you want to hide your dice from the players or something like that. Um, and I usually, I end up most spending most of my time running games as opposed to playing in them. So this one is really nice for that. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you put the dice up there, you tip it down, it flips down and in. If you want, you can throw three or four dice on there. And they'll all come to the bottom. So in terms of features, this one has quite a, uh, quite a number of options available to whoever's rolling the dice. Um, the first and most obvious ones are, um, if you have the gate here, you want your dice to come out the front. Sometimes they'll actually roll all the way down and out. Not always. Uh, it's just kind of fun to have this little gate that you can take up and down and remove. Um, the gatehouse here actually is detachable separate pieces. So these can all be restructured however you want them to, to fit. You can that you want maybe a shield or a little courtyard that's only on one side. And so you have this nice open space here. So you roll a dice. You don't have to try and reach in to get it. This here is actually for the same thing. It has a just like a low wall section so that you can get your hand in there easier. It still keeps the dice in, but you're not trying to reach down in among all the walls. So it comes with a courtyard. That is the flimsiest part of this by far. The rest of this is actually a very solid construction. It's quite stable. It doesn't it's like hold it. 
I've never thankfully dropped it from a significant height, which is a story involving the red dice tower. Um, but I'm pretty sure it would hold together fairly well. Uh, like you can actually just like grip it from one side. It's got like a little handle in the middle. It's quite sturdy. It, it's really good. Like I, that's part of the reason I suggest if you want to make one, use this set. It is absolutely fantastic for that. Um, if you want to just roll out onto the table, you can just do that. And it's a two. All that fanfare for nothing. If you want to, you can put the little, uh, I call it a throne, it's not really a throne, but you can slide that in there, and then your dice lands on the tray, sort of. There, that one's better. Uh, it just keeps it contained, you know, the least amount of profile, right, if you're worried about dice flying off the table or whatever, or rolling all over things, or the courtyard's too big. It has a nice small footprint that way. Um, if you need to roll a ton of dice, you can attach a different rolling tray. Uh, I've never needed to use that. Uh, in my, I had in mind, though, when I, I used to play Warhammer 40k, and that's what I had in mind, was like huge stacks of little d6s. Um, it's never really become necessary. The drawbridge does actually, or not the drawbridge, the gate does actually work. Goes up and down, uh, which can be a handy way to store your dice if you want, if you just want to keep them in there. They stay in, the gate will hold them in. You can bring the gate up. Kick Sauron's butt at the same time. Totally knocked him over. It's okay. He's a jerk. We have. What other features are there? Oh! If you have a dice that is rolling particularly well, you can showcase it to the rest of the table by putting it in the tower at the top and just, you know, letting everyone know how amazing your dice is, and that's your, your special dice. Uh, if you don't have incredibly thin fingers like me, you can just pull one of these off and you know, pull it out that way. Duh. What other features does it have? Oh, oh yes, of course, I can't forget. Uh, we have over here the dungeon, which is not just for looks. Maybe tip that up, see a little better. This dungeon. In the back of the dungeon, uh, there is a door. And this door opens up. And what it actually does is you sort of see it tilts back. It actually creates a ramp. And it cuts off about half of the chute coming down. So, like, if you look on the back here, there's this little mark right here, this uh, little cross peg. That's actually a bar that sticks through on the inside. Um, and it's just, you know, deflect the dice a little bit, make sure they don't just come straight down. Um, and so it leans, that, that door leans up against that, and that's where it cuts off. So basically it cuts off right here. What that does, though, is, and the, the reason that I designed this, the intention I had in mind, was that if you have a dice that is performing particularly poorly, you can give it one last chance to try and win you over. You put it as directly center as you possibly can, maybe on a one for, uh, you know, just superstitious reasons, and then you tip it down and through. This dice has passed. There is the possibility, however, when you're tipping it, that worked out well, that it will not come down and through. It will be caught by that door that's out and end up in the prison. This dice is now condemned. It doesn't get to play anymore. It has lost the right to roll. It has failed the wizard's challenge and is now in prison. Over that. Uh, oh, and the, the way you close that, I don't know, I did that kind of quick. So you push it in here. You can just reach up and in here and touch the bottom of it, and then it flips back up. For little uh, details, what I like, we have the 
the various balconies, of course. I quite like the chimney detail on this one, actually. I, I thought that came out really nicely. It, it keeps uh, expanding and moving further out to make room for the giant rolling tray so that it's not clipping the top of the chimney. Um, it's got a little rain barrel and stuff outside, which I like. Uh, on the back of it, there's a very dusty stoop for a familiar, and there's the little familiar's door to enter. We have keys here to get into all of the various doors. There's a key over here as well. One well, puts their keys on the outside, right? That's a terrible idea. Ah, wizards. I don't know. They don't make sense. We have our uh, guest greeting crossbow on this balcony, which is nice. So if you ever want to, you know, have like wine and I guess that's chicken and shoot crossbows at people, that's the place to do it from. Uh, little axes on the front. A little emblem here, which my friend Adam has taken to calling Chick Butt. Uh, you would have to see it. I'll get a close-up shot of it and show you Chick Butt. Um, he's not entirely wrong. We have, of course, have our little flaming tower. Like a little lighthouse up here, because every good wizard's tower has some sort of weird, fiery, igniting thing on the top. Um, I quite like how this turned out, actually. Um, I wanted something that was non-symmetrical as a dice tower and I wanted something that you know had style to it and actually looked like it it belonged at the D&D table in addition to being a dice tower uh, and so I was very lucky that this castle set was actually in stock because I think they stopped production on it like I don't know maybe a month or two later um, but it's been absolutely perfect for this. It, like I said, go and find one if you want to make a Lego dice tower. You you could not ask for a more perfect set to do it with. Uh, and I have a ton of pieces left over too, so I could make a far more monstrous one if I wanted. Um, I don't want to. That red one was as big as I planned to go. Um, however, I'm very happy with it. I, I thought it fit my needs wonderfully. It's not symmetrical. It looks like a wizard's tower. It has neat little features. It, you know, it's not just like a, a dump and forget kind of thing. You actually can play with it a little bit. Um, because it is Lego, you know, I didn't I didn't just want a dice tower. If I wanted a dice tower, I would just bought a wooden dice tower. Um, I wanted something that you could play with in addition to, to rolling dice through. Um, so that's my castle dice tower. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed that video and you would like to show your appreciation, uh, check out the description box. Uh, I have some links down there. You can follow me on Twitter or you know, uh, subscribe. But also, I'm trying to uh, succeed as an indie author and I have some links down there to uh, some of my books. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you went and downloaded some of them. Uh, thanks, see you next time.